Coming up on We Talk News this week, is the lame duck Congress going to deliver federal cannabis reform? Senator Chuck Schumer infers just that. Meanwhile, New York State lowers its threshold for imperfections on state-grown weed, hoping they'll have enough product when their adult program launches. Plus, Vermont adult-use dispensaries are now open for business. And Switzerland becomes the latest European Union country to start a medical cannabis program. All that and Coast to Coast Cannabis Reports on We Talk News with Elena Pinto next. We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. I'm Elena Pinto for Pro Cannabis Media, and welcome to We Talk News. We're just a few days away from the midterm election, and cannabis policy is taking center stage in several states, as well as Capitol Hill. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has Congress, quote, getting close to introducing and passing some form of the Safe Banking Act. Marijuana Moment reports it's intended for a package of modest reforms to be filed during the lame duck session and pass it through both chambers and send it to the president's desk before the end of the current Congress. We spoke with attorney Blake Mensing, who's done lots of legal work in the industry, and he says while the timeline might not be totally clear, the much-needed reform is closer than we think. So we absolutely will see reform at the federal level. Um, I don't have the crystal ball in terms of what will happen when. Um, The Safe Banking Act would do a, a a lot for the industry. Um, a lot of advocates have have uh, said that let's not take this baby incremental step. Let's try to make things uh, structurally sound now because we know there's going to be a shift um, in, in regulation across the country when the feds get involved. Um, the biggest bone of contention uh, on folks who say safe banking doesn't go far enough is that it's completely si- silent on uh, on equity. Um, and, and equity in this context is not you know, about dollars and cents. It's about people who were wronged by the failed drug war uh, who need to, I think, get a, a first crack at state uh, licensure as well as federal licensure. Uh, and the Safe Banking Act really just would open up some more you know, financial avenues, um, which are clearly needed, um, but it's not you know, the great cure-all. It's not a silver bullet. Um, it will not change things overnight. Only time will tell just when that reform will become reality. And for a closer look at Congress's efforts and everything else happening in the nation's capital this week, let's check in with Vote Pro Podcast's Phil Adams. Hi, I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast, and this is the Weed Talk News DC Report. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says that Congress is close to passing a bipartisan cannabis reform bill this session. During a debate this week with Senate challenger Joe Pinion, Schumer said he's been working with members of both parties on a combined banking and expungements bill, and that it may get done, quote, rather soon. The so-called Safe Plus bill combines provisions of the Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act with measures to expunge the records of those with nonviolent cannabis convictions. The Safe Banking Act has been passed out of the House in one form or another seven times in recent years. The bill aims to protect institutions that offer financial services to legitimate cannabis businesses from federal penalties. The Safe Plus bill is not expected to federally legalize marijuana. President Biden this week equated the cannabis pardons he issued last month to expungements. During an interview on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, Biden touted the pardons for people convicted of simple cannabis possession as something he's done to improve the lives of black Americans. Biden went on to say that, quote, Anybody who is ever arrested just for the possession of marijuana, their record is expunged. According to a 2016 Congressional Research Service report, however, the president appears to have overstated the facts. The CRS report states that while a pardon does restore certain rights, it does not go as far as an expungement, which, quote, removes the record of the conviction as well as the underlying guilt. The presidential pardons affected some 7,500 U.S. citizens and legal aliens 
convicted of one or more cannabis offenses. A demographic breakdown shows that 41.3% of them are white, 31.8% are Hispanic, and 23.6% are black. With Maryland citizens set to vote next week on an adult use referendum, a new ad campaign dropped this week to promote its passage. The Yes on Four campaign released a 15 second spot urging voters to approve the ballot initiative passed by the Maryland General Assembly last April. Question four simply asks voters if they favor legalization of cannabis by individuals at least 21 years of age in the state of Maryland. A recent Washington Post University of Maryland poll shows 73% of Marylanders favor legalization. If the measure is approved as expected, a complementary bill setting the regulations for the adult use program would take effect. That's the Weed Talk News DC report for this week. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. As more states legalize the plant and look to clarify regulations, many still don't allow adults to grow their own cannabis at home, including in the Garden State. But this week, New Jersey's governor said the state should, quote, revisit its current criminalization of homegrown cannabis once the current market has had time to mature. Jill Goldsbury is in New Jersey with all the details. Hey, New Jersey cannabis lovers. This is Jill Goldsbury here with the New Jersey Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. Well, it looks like there is going to be some new considerations in New Jersey on homegrown cultivation. According to a recent report in Marijuana Moments, Governor Phil Murphy agrees that New Jersey doesn't have enough recreational cannabis locations currently in operation. And for this reason, the governor has stressed that he does not want the industry dominated by the big guys, meaning the MSOs, the multi-state operators. And this week on Ask the Governor podcast, which is on WNYC radio, he was asked about plant distinct, the plant distinction between growing at home and getting the plant at a local dispensary. When does it become, when does it become legal as a plant? was the question. His answer in short is giving cannabis lovers some sort of hope since the industry is doing well, already ranking in over $4.6 million in tax revenue this year. Uh, Governor, An Governor Murphy answered the question quite modestly. And he said, and I quote, I'm of the opinion that we should revisit the question at some point, And I'm not sure now is the right time to revisit it. So we will keep watch for more news on for more news on this and update the homegrown conversation. So hopefully this time next year there will be some changes in the allowances for homegrown uh, for the homegrown plant. I'm Jill Goldsbury with We Talk News. This has been your news in New Jersey, and it's been great talking to you. Another East Coast state facing some changes is Massachusetts. Earlier this summer, Governor Charlie Baker signed off on a package of reforms for the state's industry, but with changes set to take place next week, now there are many questions about the implementation and application of the state's new laws. We Talk News producer Tori Chamberlain breaks it down in this week's Bay State Report. Hey guys, I'm Tori Chamberlain, and here's what's happening in Massachusetts. Earlier this summer, lawmakers put together a package of reforms having to do with cannabis business all across the state, and it was ultimately signed into law and passed off by Governor Charlie Baker. Now, those laws are set to take effect next week as we head into the midterm elections. And while a lot of them are really exciting having to do with social equity and even cannabis consumption lounges, there seems to be a bit of confusion surrounding one of the new laws, according to Dan Adams of the Boston Globe, and it has to do with host community agreements. In Massachusetts, a cannabis company must first negotiate with local leaders in the municipality where it wants to operate before they go ahead and apply for that state license. Now, lawmakers were basically facing pressure from municipal leaders to pretty much preserve existing deals that are already being upheld, but cannabis companies and operators were pressuring them to reform those deals and how the process was done. With this new law, the legislature basically chose to do neither, 
and instead leaves the decision in the hands of the Cannabis Control Commission. Now, that agency has a lot on its hands right now, so only time will tell when they're going to get around to addressing this issue. But for the time being, the Boston Globe is reporting that several communities have actually stopped approving new cannabis facilities until regulators step in and provide guidance surrounding this law. In lighter news, though, Massachusetts and Cape Cod in particular is known for its cranberry bogs, but move over cranberries because there is a new top crop in town. Leafly just issued its 2022 harvest report and citing some information from the 2021 State Agricultural Review, it finds that cannabis now brings in more crop value to the Bay State than cranberries by a long shot. Cranberries bring in $66 million on average to the state at wholesale value, while cannabis now brings in $362 million. So that's, I can't even do the math, so much more than the cranberries are bringing in. So just goes to show you, like we always tell you that it's a whole new world of weed. We'll continue to watch the industry grow here in the Bay State. For now, I'm Tori Chamberlain for Weed Talk News. Traveling to Vermont now, where the Green Mountain State is only getting greener. Recreational sales have been underway for just about a month now, and state regulators don't seem to have any plans of slowing down the budding industry. Here's Jessie Lynn Dolan with more from Vermont this week. I'm Jessie Lynn Dolan from Nurse Grown Organics and Vermont Cannabis Nurses, and this is the Weed Talk News Vermont Report. Vermonters were welcomed in the door of two new retailers who opened shop this past week. Higher Elevation in Morrisville and Magic Man in Essex Junction are open for business. This week, the Vermont Cannabis Control Board awarded nine more cannabis licenses, including one retailer making a total of 16 retailers approved so far. With one month since the start of adult use sales, the control board gave a progress report noting significant milestones as they have issued nearly 300 license for cannabis establishments and 300 employee ID cards. After acknowledging the bottlenecks from product manufacturing and lab testing with only three labs currently operating and one newly licensed, Commissioner Pepper acknowledged the backlog for product registry, but warned retailers that selling unregistered products was an actionable offense for the board with possibility of suspension or license revocation. Pepper urged licensees to follow rules for the sake of the market's legislative viability and sustainability. His final warning was to those who remain in the illicit market and use social media vagrantly, that upon complaints, compliance staff will refer them for criminal investigation. The board continues to give weekly updates on the medical program, reporting numerical data on how many new caregiver and patient applications, renewals, and approvals, as well as new dispensary employees are recorded. Hedy Vermont hosts their fifth annual Veterans Day giveaway from 12 to 2 p.m. on Saturday, November 12th. Visit HeddyVermont.com for more information. That's the Vermont Report for Weed Talk News. I'm Vermont's cannabis nurse and gone GA, Jessie Lynn Dolan. Overseas, Europe is getting a little greener as well. Switzerland gave the green light for medical cannabis earlier this summer, and now the first medical marijuana imports are arriving in the country. So let's check in with Lex Pelger for the very latest happening across the pond. Hello, everybody. I'm Lex Pelger of White Whale Creations for Weed Talk News. This is your European Cannabis Report. The biggest news comes out of Switzerland because they're having their first medical cannabis imports. Two companies are joining up, Solumedics and Ostrisana, and they're initiating the first imports of medical cannabis. These two companies will control all the steps from cultivation of the plants to patient care. This is important because they only opened up medical cannabis to simply a doctor's prescription in August. And so this is the beginning of true medical cannabis in Switzerland. So it's a really big deal for patients there. 
The next story is similar. In Czech, policymakers have presented a draft plan at the cabinet level for regulation of cannabis. They're lamenting that they're losing billions of crowns each year in taxation, and they want to come up with a strictly regulated cannabis market for the Czech Republic. This is important because Czech has always been somewhat of, uh, regressive and not into the cannabis thing. So to see this opening up at the level of cabinet is a big deal. And lastly, in hemp news, the USDA of the United States released a report on the hemp market in the EU, and it's grown 75% since 2015. This is important for the sequestration of carbon dioxide, as well as for the many uses of hemp fiber and hemp seed. The biggest grower by far is France, where I am, with 37%, followed by Italy and Netherlands with 8% each, and then spread out across the other little countries. That's the news in, in Europe. I'm Lex Pelger of Whitewell Creations. And this is Weed Talk News. America's neighbor to the North has had federally legal cannabis for four years now, but the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Similarly to many American companies, cannabis workers and business owners in Canada say they've suffered some negative effects from legalization. And now there's a group getting together to officially represent the interests of licensed Canadian cannabis stores at the federal level. Our Canadian correspondent, Debbie Facey, has the story. Hi, this is Debbie Facey from We Talk News, coming at you with the Canadian Joint of the Week. This week, what we have coming to the market, I should say spring 2023, Tilray has been able to make a, an agreement with the Colorado-based dispensary LP, where we're going to be able to obtain the wonderful strain Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web has been known for the great relief that it's done for a lot of the autistic children, as well as many of the adults that are suffering from autism and any other sort of ailment that cannabis, or I should say CBD, has been made a positive influence on. So we're going to be able to obtain the Charlotte's Web strain, but it's going to be, it's going to be um, distributed to medical patients first. And then it's going to be regulated to recreational users, which I do believe is a great way in order for us to start creating a little bit more of a difference when it comes to the medical needs versus the recreational needs due to the abundance that we do have here in Canada, or I should say almost in Ontario. Um, but no, it's a great thing that we're going to be able to do. And I think a lot of people are going to be not only happy, but be very beneficial from it. Also, what we have going on is the great, I want to say, um, reformatting of the need of additional THC added to the beverages that we already have on the market. Currently, some of the beverages do have the 10 milligram mark but it is capped at the amount of beverages you're able to purchase. What they are now arguing, or I should say suggesting, is for them to up the amount of THC that is not only going to be in the product, but the amount of product the customer is able to purchase. So as for example, that is going from five cans per customer to a wonderful whopping 48 cans. I'm not too sure where the 48 or how we really got the jump from five to 48, but somehow that is a logical number. And I guess we shall see if Canada does overall agree with such consumption levels. But at the same time, I personally do think that we are kind of jumping the gun when it does come to the amount of THC being added into our beverages, much less edibles, but that's just my opinion. Can't speak up for all of Canada. The last but not least, we did just have Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Here in Ontario, we've had the, I want to say the beneficial, but also the downside of a lot of the elect market still being intact. And what I mean by being intact as in there are still stores that are operating regardless of raids or being shut down within the future past or currently, 
there are still the elites market which are operating. And over the Halloween weekend, there were two that decided to have Halloween events. And George Smitherman had found out, which is one of the most important people when it comes to our cannabis laws and agreements, he actually ended up attending the events and was not only appalled, but almost confused about how we had a elect market, a special store, not only dispensing cannabis, but also dispensing popcorn to all of the children that were also trick-or-treating. Here in Canada, we do have that big I want to say challenge when it does come to the legacy and the legal market. But here in Ontario, we tend to have a little bit more of an issue because of the amount of illicit markets in the stores that had created before and are still intact and have found ways to be able to get around the laws. So that being said, Halloween was great. Subside the two stores that decided to distribute popcorn to the children, which I do have to say they shouldn't have done. But once again, this is Debbie Facey from We Talk News with your Canadian Joint of the Week. Also in California, cannabis cultivators have long suffered from an onslaught of tough taxation and strict regulations. In a recent film screening in Oakland, Governor Gavin Newsom was featured in a video where he expressed his interest in seeing reform happen at the federal level so that farmers in California can, quote, supply the rest of the nation when it comes to cannabis. And speaking of supporting cultivators, regulators in Washington state are considering some changes to cut them some slack as well. And they wanna cut out the middleman altogether and allow farmers to sell their product directly to consumers. Josh Kincaid has the details in this week's Washington State Report. I'm Josh Kincaid from the Talking Hedge with the Washington State Cannabis Report for We Talk News. Washington considers allowing cannabis growers to have direct-to-consumer sales. Washington's considering allowing small cannabis farmers to sell directly to consumers, similar to what's allowed for wineries, breweries, and distilleries. Washington would also be following the lead of a few Canadian provinces that allow licensed producers to sell cannabis to consumers at cultivation facilities. And as a reminder, Washington is not vertically integrated, meaning that growers and manufacturers cannot also be retailers. Given the imbalance between cannabis producer licenses and cannabis retail licenses in Washington, prices have been plummeted and small farmers are struggling to find a way to get their products in front of customers. So ongoing discussions on how to solve the problem have coalesced into a new possibility of allowing direct sales at cultivation sites. Cannabis farmers markets were common during Washington State's medical-only days before adult use regulations and other changes pushed patients and customers into state licensed stores. The move, if approved by regulators, would give small growers a financial boost through increased sales and could spur other states to follow suit. So when will Washington State get direct-to-consumer sales? You're going to have to come back to the Weed Talk News to find out. But with that, we're going to have to roll up this Washington State Cannabis Report. I'm Josh Kincaid from the Talking Hedge reporting for Weed Talk News. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out. Sticking with the Pacific Northwest, cultivation issues seem to be a theme out there. The wholesale price of cannabis has been dropping dramatically in a number of markets, making it tough for cultivators to remain competitive. And that's exactly what's happening in Oregon. Marianne Kersaji is in Oregon to explain. I'm Marianne from Alibi Cannabis with this week's Oregon Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. The drop in wholesale prices continues to put untenable pressures on producers. According to OLCC data, wholesale prices are down 60% from September of 2020, which was the last peak. Retail prices are down only 36% over the same time period, so this is another example of pricing pressures being pushed up the supply chain. On better news, P3 Packaging has launched a recycling program for metric plant tags and ties. Simply stop by their facility in Milwaukee and grab a free box or drop off your tags for recycling. And finally, there are a number of rule changes the OLCC is working through. The most alarming is an attempt to curb inaccurate test results by forcing producers to recall and retag product if it is found to have inaccurate test results. 
there are no proposed consequences for the labs actually generating these inaccurate results. That'll do it for the Oregon Report this week. I'm Marianne with Alibi for Weed Talk News. And finally, we tell you every week, it is a whole new world of weed out there. And even the OGs of the cannabis industry are brewing up new ideas every day. PAX, a pioneering leader in the vaping department, has released its new vaporizer devices that some are calling the Nespresso of cannabis. The new PAX infused flower with solventless hash features a compressed puck of cannabis infused with solventless hash. So that fits right into your vape for an easy and apparently pretty tasty high. So next time you're looking for a little pick-me-up, you can grab a pre-packaged puck that's just as convenient as picking up a fresh espresso. It really is a whole new world of weed out there. So remember, use it wisely. That's all for Weed Talk News this week. I'm Elena Pinto for Pro Cannabis Media. We'll see you next time. As a broker, we have access to many, many cannabis carriers. So I'll go in with two or three uh, quotes for people. The quotes might be 20,000 for one, 22,000 for another, 17,500 for another. Pretty close among the three. What I tell people is it's not the pricing, it's what's included and not included, meaning exclusions. An exclusion in layman's terms is just something that's not included. It's not on the menu, so it's just not included. But if you don't know that, if no one shows you that on page 71 of 150 page policy, you're not gonna know, no one knows. I never met one person that says they read an insurance policy. If you do, you know, I got some property in Florida for you. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. So the, the reality of the matter is, uh, you know, big banks and small banks are gonna be different in a lot of ways. And they're both gonna have their advantages and disadvantages. For a business like cannabis, you really have to have an integral knowledge of that business and a real granular knowledge of that business and the players involved in it. And that's why if you look at the banks that are successful to play in this space in Massachusetts, they are smaller banks that are very heavy, intensified, personal touch, human communication, where you don't get a lot of that with the bigger banks. State Cannabis Report is supported by Holyoke Cannabis, Holyoke's finest cannabis recreational experience. programming is available live and on demand on our Facebook page at Pro Canna Media, on Instagram at Pro Cannabis Media, on LinkedIn also at Pro Cannabis Media, on YouTube and YouTube Live on Pro Cannabis Media, Twitter at Pro Canna Media, and on twitch.tv backslash Pro Cannabis Media. So like, share, and subscribe to all of our content, newsletters, and shows live or on demand. We are Pro Cannabis Media.